Good morning guys, welcome back to a brand new video. It's another beautiful day here on Miracle Mountain. I don't know if you can hear that plane, but I just had two fighter jets literally fly past me about 100 meters away and they were lower in the sky than I am up here on the mountain and it was so shocking. I can feel it in my body right now. It wouldn't be another day building the cabin without having to haul all of the materials to the actual work site, but actually it's hard work, but also quite therapeutic and I'm working on the roof now. So I'm starting to see big changes, which is good morale boost. I could definitely do this hike in my sleep now. That's for sure. I've done it many times over the last couple of days in the pitch dark, so I know it well. But let me show you what I've been working on. I can probably show you the roof structure so far from up here better because at the moment the sun's shining in my face. So this is probably the easiest angle to show you the roof on because <laughs> I'm higher up. But if I come lower down so that you can see, I've set the ridge across there and the first and last rafter put them in place. The reason for this is I wanted to make sure everything's nice and square, plumb, level. And then I'm doing a nice bird's mouth on this wall plate and then a nice face cut on the ridge there and it's working out really nicely. I'm so stoked with the pitch of the roof of the cabin. I've always wanted to build a cabin in the woods and it's just really pleasing to look at. I wanna create something special up here. I'm not known for doing things the simple way or the ordinary way. I mean, my last chicken coop that I built at our off-grid property that has a dormer window that the chickens perch is in front of. So when you walk past the chicken coop, the chickens are staring out of the window. So I like to do things a little bit creatively, a little bit different. And I think you're gonna see that on this project as well. I'm also considering putting a dormer window in the other side to let a little bit more light in. Let me know in the comments if you think that's a good idea. But right now I need to crack on. I've got about another nine rafters to cut. If you've not heard of Teeny, then think of your favorite store combined with the dollar store all in one handy app. Teemu has got everything from crafting supplies, outdoor gear, tools, kitchen things, absolutely anything, and all at affordable prices. We've been using this three-in-one laser tape measure from Teemu that we got for around 25 pounds. And honestly, it's been amazing to have around. There's a five meter tape measure for traditional measurements, but also a laser measurement, which can measure a length of up to 100 meters, but also measure area, where it stores the information on the LCD display on the top. I can see this being an integral part of our toolkit. So this laser tape measure is currently on offer at only 17.49. I've added the link in our description, so check it out and grab yourself an epic deal. We've been using a number of super handy products from TeamU, including this lithium battery chainsaw for pruning trees, a log splitter to effortlessly create firewood by splitting it into parts for our wood burner, and a carry bag to seamlessly transport the wood up to the house. We've even got a number of solar outdoor lights to place around the property, which is super handy and requires no maintenance. Download the TeamU app with our link in the description to get your £100 coupon bundle deal, or just search using our code here in the TeamU search bar. And don't forget, if you're a new TeamU user, click the link in our description to snag the best deal ever.
So things are progressing really quickly with the roof. I've nearly got this entire side on. I've got one more rafter to cut. They're all just sitting in place, which is nice to know that the precision means that they're just sitting there, they're locked in, which is what you want. So when I fasten them down, it's gonna be super strong, which is always good for a roof, especially because we do get some uh, fairly big storms here. Don't want the roof ripping off, so I'm building it as strong as possible. But I need to go to the UTV now, pick up one more rafter. I can cut the bird's mouth and the angle in that beam and then get cracking on fastening them all down. It's getting a little bit tricky in the space now with the scaffold, because I can only stand up in certain areas, but yeah, it's looking good. Check it out. This is actually a really good angle. You can see, you've got the doorway here, and then I'm just missing this rafter here that I'm gonna go and pick up from the UTV. And you can see the overhang to stop the weather hitting the cladding that I use on the outside, just keep the weather away a little bit, the sun and the rain. It is such a beautiful day here today. The sun is out, it's really quite warm, and I've started to notice leaves coming out on the trees, which is really exciting because it means that summer, well, I'm not excited for summer, but it means spring is around the corner and spring is one of my favorite seasons. And it's made me realize that I have not got my summer garden prepared at all. So today I'm gonna to be planting a heck load of different seeds. For some reason, my glasses are fogging up. I don't know why. <laughs> but I've got it all prepped behind me and I'm really excited to get started. Gardening is my absolute favorite activity. It really keeps me occupied, helps my brain settle. And I don't know if it's gonna pick up on the mic, but I can hear the frogs in the background, which is so nice because they're quiet all winter and now they're back, which is just a wonderful sound. I picked this up in Lidl and it looks like there's 12 little sections in each one and there's 10 all together. So I can plant all my seeds in there. This is my seed store at the moment. And I've got here an old journal. Well, not old, it's from when I did my first spring garden. And let's see, oh, hello little cricket. I must, okay, so I wrote down different ones that I was gonna plant, which is handy. Here we go. This is what I'd written, all nice. And then I actually have a diagram of how I'd planted them. So it gives me a good idea of what to actually plant. 
So I'm thinking it's going to be onions, lettuce, peppers, tomatoes, cucumbers. I've already got basil growing and marigolds growing and loads of parsley growing. I'll show you those. But then there's got, well, not garlic, it's too late. I guess I could plant garlic for later in the year, but I don't have any. Rosemary, I may as well grow some more of that. I love it. Parsnips, I did successfully grow some. And aubergine, squash, corn. I don't know if I got any corn seeds, but I've got a load of seeds here that I've bought over the years. And then when I was in Lidl, as well as picking up this fantastic thing, I got some flowers because I want to plant loads of different flowers and attract as many insects as I can, all the pollinators. A nice mixture. Now, there we go. Oh, and some peas because peas are just the absolute best and grow really easily. I've always had an easy time with them. So let's find all the seeds that I need. So I've got these to set up, which look pretty good. They've got like these little vent things to put on. I guess you just pop that on, do that in a minute. But my seeds, <laughs> there's a lot and I did have a spillage and it greens and I grow them for the chickens. So I do grow some stuff for the animals, some stuff for us. So parsnips, yes. Cucumbers, I nearly did them last year, but it was a bit late in the year, so they didn't survive. Onions always do well. And then peppers do well as well. Rocket seems to grow all year. I'll grow some more of that in my herb garden. This is a small type of cucumber that I wanna make my own gherkins with. Cute. We've got cabbage, you can never have enough. This is grown everywhere in Portugal. And this is, I think this one is, I don't know if it's necessarily a Portuguese breed, but you see it everywhere in the supermarkets and I buy it a lot. The chickens love it, so I wanna grow my own. Courgette is always a good one, a nice growing, creeping one. Watermelon, I tried to grow this last year, but it was too late in the year, so. I want to separate them into different ones because it makes it easier to grow them in there and also know how many pots I have for these seeds, how many I should actually plant. I know from experience that the peas grow really well and I've got loads of peas. I know the lettuce grows really well. So I've got a few different peas. I've got a garden pea. I've got just one that is called pea. <laughs> a Kelvedon wonder. Spaghetti squash, I grew this previously, really good. It's a creeper grower. So let's mix this up into creepers, herbs, non-creepers, <laughs> cabbages, ones for the chickens, Swiss chard. I don't really eat that, but I'm gonna grow it. Oh yes, aubergine. You're not a climber, you're a normal one. Chinese cabbage, I absolutely love this. Brussels sprouts, love them. And I said I had basil, but I thought actually, you know what, I'll grow some more so they can go with the herbs. Tomatoes, these seem to be the only tomato seeds I've got, which I'm really surprised at, but I'll have to get some more. Chives, you can go with the onions, and then leeks, you can also go with the onions. So I've got a few different types here. I wanted to just say as well that gardening for me is just a really fun hobby. I'm not gonna tell you this is the right way or the wrong way to do it. Whatever works best is best for you. I just enjoy it and like to see what happens, what comes out of the seeds that I plant and just find a lot of joy in that. So that's what I'm gonna be doing now. I've got everything prepared. I've got some soil ready and I'm really excited to get these seeds in the soil. Look at this cute little shovel thing. <laughs> that came with the kit. I'm guessing you can shovel the correct amount in and then this, make a little hole to put the seed in. There's also this, which is handy. And 
little labels. I'm really bad at labelling what I plant and generally forget what I've actually planted. But anyway, let's get the soil in. This is just um, good old compost soil. It's um, I did try and get some seedling soil, but I couldn't find any in the shops. So what I'm going to do is any big clumps, I'll just pull that out, any clumps of twigs. But this is what I always grow my seedlings in anyway. Um, and this little tray thing is really handy because it'll pick up any of the soil that falls out. I'm just going to lob it all in and then smooth over. And then I can just have it there. Nearly done. I'm so excited. The, the best thing for me, I don't know about you, when it comes to gardening and growing your own things, especially from seed, is watching them develop when they first come out of the ground and then when they get their true leaves and then when they start to bear fruit or the actual vegetable. Oh, it's the most exciting thing ever. Okay, let's give that a nice little... See, that's quite a big clumpy bit of wood stuff, so take that out. Uh, I could probably do with a bit more. I could have probably just literally got a big handful and just wedged it all in, but I thought I'd use this dainty little scoop because it's very cute. And I'm going to pack it down. Well, no, I'm going to put it, press, press it down a bit, but not pack it in too deep because I don't want it to be compacted. Okay, now make some holes. One. <laughs> I am the only one in this household that likes aubergine and this is the only one I've ever grown before and it was successful so I'm going to plant a few of these because you never want to plant just one seed, you don't know exactly how many are going to take whether you've planted a seed that's a dud and was never going to germinate anyway so I'm going to plant probably about six aubergine plants and see what happens with that. Well, we've done it, we have made it, we have planted two different seeds. We've got peppers and we've got aubergine. So now I'm gonna set up, I think, a time-lapse and do the rest of them. There we have it. I've managed to plant quite a few different varieties. I ran out of name tags at the end because even though there's 12, I was splitting some of them up into two. So at the moment I've got 10, 120 seedlings have been planted. Well, 120 seeds have been planted. I just need to figure out where to leave them. I don't think here's a good place. I don't want them stacked like that. I don't want them in direct sun, but I want them to have some sun. Uh, so I'm just looking around thinking maybe in front of the raised bed on the patio might be good. Here's my raised bed on the patio, winter variety. I'd had to kind of leave it because I went back to the UK for so long, but I've got a lot of um, foraging cabbage growing, doing its own thing. I think these might be some type of turnip, I'm not sure, but it's doing quite nicely. And then I'm thinking here, where we get some sun in the afternoon, if I plant them, uh, just pot them along here maybe, and then that'll be good. Now those seeds are planted, it's time to head down to the goats and take them for their daily walk and let the chickens out at the same time. It's always nice having this time of the day to be with the animals and also just uh, kind of take stock of what's going on because I'm standing around with them. Oh, the leggings I'm wearing are literally falling down. 
this is hard with one hand. Because <laughs> I'm standing around with them, it gives me a lot of time to really look around and see what's going on, notice what trees are producing leaves, what's coming out of the ground, all that sort of stuff. So hopefully these leggings will make it before they fall down again. <laughs> Hello. Come on then. Explore. <laughs> You're not the biggest fans of the goats still. Come on girlies, let's go for a walk. Come on. So when I let the goats and chickens out at the same time, I don't go too far with the goats because I don't want to leave the chickens too exposed to predators. Because even though this fencing is up and it stops the chickens from getting out of the football field, it doesn't stop predators from potentially getting in and getting them. So we tend to lurk around here, me and the goats. So we'll, we'll go off into the surrounding area. Let's go. And I just spotted all of these. They look like they're in the daisy family. They've literally just bloomed in the last few days. So it's glorious, all the flowers are coming back. So the area around the football pitch where the goats and the chickens live is just loads of different types of trees. So we've got behind me, there's like a slope there and above that slope, well, behind the slope is the lake. So we've got loads of different types of trees. We've got a mixture of evergreens, Douglas fir, spruce, pine, and then there's a, a few oaks and stuff, but a lot of those, unfortunately, the, the pines especially got really badly ravaged in the fire in 2022. So a lot of them have come down already and a lot of them do need to come down as well because they are dead. But that's generally what's around here and the goats love to headbutt them, eat the needles, uh, eat the bark. And then further down is lots of different types of fruit trees. So we've got olive, cherry, I'm just looking at them now, apple, I think we've got one persimmon tree and then there's just a different mix of ornamental trees. So they like to have a forage around them. They like to eat the fruit when it falls off in the summer. They like to eat the ones that I've pruned this winter that I've got some buds on. They like to eat the leaves in the summer when they're out. So we kind of just do some laps around here and hang out. But there is one, two. There's two yew trees which are highly toxic to goats and I don't have it in me to chop down these perfectly healthy trees. They're absolutely huge. I can see one there and then the other one's just over there. And they're really substantial. They've been here for probably 20 years and I don't want to cut them down, but it gives me a lot of fear when I'm out here with the goats because they do it's like they sense that I don't want them going near the tree. So they deliberately go and hang out by the yew tree and I have to chase them off. Um, I'm thinking I might put some sort of, I think there's midges or something out here, they're like buying my head. I'm gonna put some type of fencing structure up around the base so they can't get to the bark. All of the actual uh, needles from the yew are way too high up for them to reach. It's just the bark, they just really wanna to get to it. And we did have this winter i cut it all out but we had um suckers growing up at the base of them too which obviously wasn't great because it was perfect height for the goats to nibble on but i got rid of them so that's basically what this area is and the goats love it there's loads of fresh greenery growing up i think i mentioned it in a previous video and they absolutely love foraging around here so that's brilliant and it means that we can keep an eye on the chickens make sure they're safe oh my gosh something is really biting my head make sure the chickens are safe and also that the goats are having a good time. And it gives me a time to look at the flowers, see what's growing and just generally get an idea of what's going on. Good morning, it is a new day and it is a beautiful day. I'm super excited today because I'm gonna be working on the dormer window on the other side of the roof. Yesterday, I managed to get some stuff done. I brought up another 10 two by fours. It's an absolute mission hiking them to the cabin area, but my legs are feeling so strong right now. As I'm approaching the cabin, I just wanted to share with you guys this angle, this view 
Look at that massive boulder, which is actually bigger than the cabin itself. That just shows how big that stone is. But look at this, it's looking so good. So yesterday I managed to cut the rafters for the other side of the roof. And now it actually looks like a cabin, which is really cool. It's amazing what difference it makes. And these rafters, aren't attached. I just put them up there to lay everything out and see how it looked. And you can see I've left a gap. That's for the dormer window. I'd just like to say a massive thank you to every single one of you who commented on our last video that B made all about her condition with PMDD and depression. If you've not seen it, check the video before this one because it really does show you guys what was going on behind the scenes for a long, long time, many years now, and what a struggle it's been, but it's amazing to see B so, so happy and smiley. And I've literally seen her laugh more times in the last month than I probably have in the last four years. So that's absolutely incredible. She's lovely to be around. And thank you so much for all of the overwhelming support and comments and messages. It really does mean a lot to us. I've just come down from the roof because this absolute legend has brought me an ice cold can of Coke, hiked it all the way up here. And a sandwich. And a sarni. <laughs> How amazing is that? The time has come. The dormer is all framed out and I've got the window, which is heavier than it looks. I like this window because it matches the two other windows really nicely. It's wooden, it's solid. Let's see if it actually fits. The moment of truth, I'm pretty sure it will. So far, so good. Nice, like a glove. Few little wedges, secure it in nicely once the actual roofing's on probably. I'll do this last, same with glazing the other two windows, but yeah, I'm stoked with how that looks from this side. I wanna go the other side and have a look. To say I'm stoked with that dormer window is an understatement. And if I come round to the back, you'll be able to see it sticking out and it adds so much character. The pitch is so pleasing. I can't wait to get this boarded up and onto the next step. And here's another view of the cabin just blending nicely into the landscape. When this is done, it's gonna look like it's always been there. 
So I hope you enjoyed seeing what me and B got up to over the last couple of days. It's been really productive. I'm so happy with that cabin. On to the next stage, which is an exciting development because things are going to move pretty quickly, I think. Also, I've noticed in the YouTube analytics, 50% of the people who watch our videos are not yet subscribed. So please click the subscribe button, like the video, share it far and wide. It really does help us out. Thanks once again, and I'll catch you on the next video.